everyone, you're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. The first multiplex in Srinagar opened today with a special screening of Amir Khan's Lal Singh Chadda, ending the long wait of residents in the valley. Jammu and Kashmir's Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha inaugurated the Inox multiplex in Srinagar. On Sunday, he inaugurated two multi-purpose uh, cinema halls in Pulwama and Shopia. He said cinema halls will be opened across Jammu and Kashmir as part of the administration's youth outreach program. Cinemas were shut down in Kashmir in 1989 after the outbreak of militancy. Since 1998, at least three cinemas that were closed by extremist groups were reopened, but all of them shut their doors in less than two years due to the absence of moviegoers. The promoters of the multiplex hope that this time it's going to break that jinx. Now, this step to establish normalcy in the Kashmir Valley comes in the wake of targeted killings of migrants and Kashmiri pundits, which has created a shadow of insecurity. The big question emerges, can this push for normalcy be sustained to encourage other businesses to set up shops in the valley? Is the central government's Naya Kashmir mission now a reality? Before I get the guests, Here's what happened in Srinagar today. After three decades, the cinemas have returned to Kashmir. On Sunday, LG Manoj Sena kicked off two makeshift cinema halls come auditoriums in militancy-affected Shopian in Pulwama. This was to wean away youth from joining submersive activities. Oh, yeah. जम्मू कश्मीर के हर जिले में मिशन यूथ के अंतर्गत ये सौ सीटर सिनेमा हॉल बनाए जाएं। The biggest beneficiaries would be students who would not only enjoy the cinemas but would also be given education through audiovisual learning. खुलामा मैं बहुत पहली बार खुला ये सिनेमा और यहाँ पे आज जल्दी मनोज से ना आए थे इसकी नॉवेलेशन करने के लिए और बहुत सारे स्कूल से हम बच्चे जमा हुए थे आज यहाँ पे उनके साथ हमने बात की कुछ क्लिप्स देखी हैं सब लोगों को यहाँ के लोगों को बहुत एक्सपोज़र मिलने वाला है वरना तो बाहर जाना पड़ता और उनसे बात भी हुई बहुत सारों की और उनने यहाँ पे इनोग्रेशन जब की तो बहुत अच्छा हुआ कि एक्सपोज़र अब बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़े। While all the 20 districts across the Union territory would have mini cinema halls, the biggest and the first multiplex in Kashmir would start today. The 520-seater, three-story multiplex is a state-of-the-art facility and is set to attract entertainment-starved valley residents. The move will also regain Bollywood's lost connection with Kashmir. Bollywood or uh, Kashmir ka rishta is very old relationship. I think the first film here was shot Barsat by Raj Kapoor. So we want to revive that. We want to revive the connection of Bollywood and Kashmir. We also want to give full entertainment to our children, to our students, to our elderly. There must be at least 50% people in this state who have not seen, in the valley, who have not seen a film in a cinema hall. Between 2000 to 2018, many cinema owners tried to revamp four of the ten cinema halls in Srinagar, but due to rising militancy, they had to lock up the facilities again. The owners are saying that there is tremendous response. Now, uh, one hopes and prays that uh, this sticks and this works very well and youngsters as well as old people, they get an opportunity to come here with their families and what? In Srinagar, this is Mufti Spa. And joining me now is Vijay Dhar. He is uh, the owner of the Inox Multiplex Cinema. Mr. Dhar, thank you so much. You have seen Kashmir go through its turbulent history. You have also been its victim. What does today mean for you? Because it's your multiplex after all. I must tell you that uh, today it's a very joyful day for me because I have had uh, association with the cinema much before the turbulence started here. We used to run a very good cinema called Broadway. And at that time, Broadway was one of the best in the yes. state. So when mm. uh, Broadway shut down, it has been always in my mind that I must provide 
the same style of entertainment that we had earlier. And that is what was behind it. And what are your views post abrogation of Article 370? Did you really foresee this moment? Uh, a dream of this nature when you say Broadway like cinema uh, would come true? You know, there are certain things that you think from your mind and then all these uh, questions that you're asking could be rehearsed. But the fact is when you do something from the heart in the interest of the state as well as in the national interest, then you don't think of anything else. So would you say that you realize that you're playing a role in building Naya Kashmir? And of course, this is a decision, as you said, perhaps being taken through your heart. Uh, well, I would say yes, a very, very small uh, speck. Because earlier we started the school, which did bring a change. And we feel that even this will bring a good change because the youngsters Almost 50% of the people here no, have not seen a movie in a cinema hall for the last 30 years. Yeah. Rest could, for example, I would go to Jammu to see a movie or to Delhi. To, at the moment you landed there, you say, which film is running? Let's go and see it. Now, we want to give them the same facility and the same entertainment as they would have in Jammu or in Delhi. Okay, Mr. Dhar. Um, are you looking at uh, building s uh, several such multi-purpose cinema halls in other parts of Jammu and Kashmir as well, outside Srinagar, in other districts? We would like to do that, but before that, we are also doing a play uh, house inside this complex because the young uh, children have nothing to do in, in this valley, particularly say uh, seven, eight, ten year old. He can be either taken to a park where he's disciplined. He can be taken to a restaurant where he's disciplined. So I want to give these children right from the age of maybe three up to my age to entertain themselves and take out their anger by hitting a ball, mm. which, which is not difficult, I presume. But since these kids have no, nowhere to go to entertain themselves, that is our second uh, thing that we're going to do. All right, Vijay Dhar, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Let me bring in my guests. Mushtaq Kak is a Bollywood actor. Sanobar Javed is a student of SP College of Srinagar. We have SP Vaid, former DGP of Jammu and Kashmir. Aarti Tiku, former, uh, you know, founder and editor-in-chief of the New Indian. Amit Raina, spokesperson of Roots in Kashmir and a Kashmiri activist. We also have Majid Haidari, senior journalist. Sanobar, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, there's a generation in Kashmir which has grown up without cinemas. What does the opening of this multiplex mean to you and your friends? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for sharing my thoughts and opinions regarding this uh, multiplex cinemas, the inauguration of multiplex cinemas in Kashmir. Uh, firstly, it is a very uh, major uh, uh, initiative taken by the government, taken by the UT administration. And uh, I would like to thank the administration and uh, my big thanks goes to LG Manoj Sina, who had uh, taken a major step in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. It's really an historic day for all of us, for all the Kashmiris. We would uh, have uh, get a chance. In, um, there are various. Like, yeah, you have taken the ticket. Have you taken the ticket? 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 जो के अगर हम पिछले साल की बात करें about 1990s की अगर हम बात करें तो सिनेमास जो है due to the onset of militancy जो है सिनेमास जो है सिनेमास यहाँ पे बंद हो चुके थे and government has taken a lot of efforts on it for the for the revival of these SP Ved SP Ved you heard from a young girl who is excited and thanking the administration you have seen law and order before the abrogation of article 370 
does this move show the government has been able to gain public support which was lacking in previous years yeah maria uh, you are absolutely right i must compliment uh, the administration headed by uh, lieutenant governor manoj sinha and my friend uh, uh, vijay dhar uh, who 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 has credit uh, hmm. uh, of having this first uh, multiplex in srinagar uh, i wish uh, more such entrepreneur in srinagar and other parts of the valley and uh, rest of the union territory come forward you know one of the basic requirement of uh, human being is entertainment uh, de stressing himself anybody would like uh, to once in a while go with the family to a mall uh, go uh, I'll give family an opportunity to shop have an ice cream go to a, a, a multiplex have see a movie have popcorn uh, it it uh, is the kind of entertainment which everyone requires yeah. and i had observed that uh, people in kashmir were deprived of it in last three decades they used to come to way mall in jammu or to delhi hmm. and uh, generally way mall in jammu uh, was uh, crowded with the, uh, uh, people from valley uh, and enjoying the movie a good thing uh, we all had tried uh, in the past but unfortunately the conditions were not very conducive it is a big step forward yes but it's a big I, step and and I, a step which yeah. which perhaps mr ved also shows that people in general because the first day first show was a hit it shows that people are continuing to have that faith that they can step out of their homes arti tiku we have seen the horror of targeted killings of uh, you know that has happened against migrants and kashmiri pandits how essential is this push for normalcy under the shadow of insecurity well maria let me uh, first say that finally after 32 years it seems that somebody in the government has been paying attention and listening to voices like mine and i am grateful that finally they are doing what needed to be done for youth in kashmir earlier but never uh, it's never late second issue which you raised about kashmiri pandits well i would say that you know apart from having a blueprint for the return and rehabilitation of kashmiri pandits hmm. they need to create a conducive atmosphere for minorities in kashmir and uh, mind you that kashmiri pandits are the aborigines you know they have a history of recorded history of 5000 years but at the same time i would say that the government hasn't done enough for the return and rehabilitation of kashmiris at this point of with cinemas opening up with lot of tourists going back in kashmir with things becoming or seeming new normal kashmiri pandits are going to ask what about them what yeah. about their return and rehabilitation and what about the acknowledgement of their genocide by islamic terrorists so that question is not going away it is it is a great uh, step it's a progressive step for a uh, secular plural democracy of india and this so called hindu right wing uh, government in fact is showing that it is as progressive as any other government in the country hmm. india fundamentally is a progressive plural nation and it is going in that direction uh, in kashmir as well yes yeah, so that so rehabilitation point a- arti that you raised Uh, particularly in the backdrop of the targeted killings what should the government do to ensure that kashmiri pandits have faith uh, i'm going to take that question to amit rana but before that majid haidri uh, the jammu region has been enjoying movie theaters for decades even with kashmiri parties running the government for decades why was kashmir denied these cinemas for so many years well maria saiba firstly ideological differences apart uh, vijay dar saab's contribution towards kashmir has been immense priceless matchless i would say but then we have to look at this cinema reopening through the perspective that we don't have elected government in place we don't have statehood in place and we don't have the return of kashmiri pandits in place so when you talk of entertainment at this moment i think it's like entertainment at gunpoint entertainment at gunpoint reminds me of shole where we had that famous dialogue 
जब तक तेरे पाउ चलेंगे इसकी सांसें चलेंगी सो एट द मोमेंट वी कश्मीरीज हैव बीन पुश टू दैट बसंती मोमेंट देर वेर वी हैव एंटरटेनमेंट एट गन पॉइंट just to glamorize and for the perception management that everything is hunky dory in kashmir whereas the reality is honorable home minister has himself said that state house will be restored only when you have normal scene place so you don't have normal scene place that is what we need to believe and once we don't have normal scene place what is the fun of reopening cinema or to just glamorize things for a kind of a perception management that everything is hunky dory i don't find any sense in the reopening of cinemas unless you have democratic okay. rights in place okay. you have elected government amit rana place. will respond to this amit how are you looking at this argument no no see i i uh, kashmiri kashmir may have lost its uh, cinema halls the kashmiris never lost their love for movies and i've seen hundreds of kashmiri muslim families whenever they come to jammu delhi mumbai they go to cinema hall with their families and enjoy the movies i have seen many huriyat leaders including relatives of majid haidari who come to delhi jammu and enjoy movies so so taking uh, linking entertainment with political issues is are two different things if majid haidari is so concerned about uh, cinema halls being constructed and other things not being done i would request him to ask his masjid committees also to stop constructing masjids and focus on something else which he wants to do so let's not let's not uh, let's not club things unnecessarily because he knows he would have used in the islamic uh, route today saying that islam doesn't allow all this but he knows with saudi having sin malls iran having sin malls he can't use that route so he has chosen uh, i don't know what connection shole had i don't think majid haidri was uh, shown a gun and asked him to go and uh, see a movie which is there is nice because he runs a school and probably majid will need his influence to get someone admitted he runs the most influential school <laughs> I mean, in, uh, this, this. so let me let me complete let me come heard. yes you you as you made, you made that argument ke hmm. abasanti and all that i did not make that so i don't remember any even posing a gun to you and making uh, going to see a movie now coming back to the pandit issue the kashmiri pandit issue one needs to understand that it will never be resolved uh, and the normal scene kashmir will be declared only the day kashmiri pandits go back to home and you cannot have kashmiri pandits bank uh, going back home unless and until you do not acknowledge what has happened to them the state has the responsibility the civil society of jammu and kashmir has the responsibility the kashmir has the responsibility and unless and until you do not acknowledge the genocide that has happened unless and acknowledge until you do not investigate and try to uh, address the concerns that led to the exodus of a community you are not going to solve that problem so great you have uh, you have uh, opened uh, cinema halls i as myself remember kashmir had almost srinagar alone had more than 10 cinema yeah. halls once upon uh, a time you had cinema halls Yes, so you had cinema halls across all district centers, and hmm. people used to throng uh, the uh, the Friday shows, especially the English movie shows. You we had queues in kilometers. We can't have Kashmiri pundits. Yes, you are. But you can see the CD. 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 Uh, how historical a day is it today particularly with theaters opening up you are an actor yourself um, and also from uh, the valley give us a sense of what does this mean for for actors such as you sabse pehle ye ki hum apne jammu kashmir sarkar ka aur kendriya sarkar ka bahut वेलकम करते हैं कि इस तरीके का इनिशिएटिव लिया गया है और एक अच्छी शुरुआत कश्मीर के हवाले से क्योंकि काफी देर से 35 30 पैंतीस साल से कश्मीर में थिएटर बिल्कुल बंद हो गया था एक एंटरटेनमेंट का साधन बंद हो गया था हालांकि एंटरटेनमेंट हो रहा था लोग कर रहे थे क्योंकि मोबाइल आपके हाथ में है आपके जेब में है आपके पॉकेट में आप कैरी करके चल रहे हैं लैपटॉप पर आप सब कुछ देख रहे हैं लेकिन जो एक फिल्म हॉल में फिल्म देखने का मज़ा है वो बिल्कुल नहीं हो रहा था क्योंकि कश्मीर से कई लोग फिल्म देखने आते थे जम्मू आते थे जम्मू फिल्म देखते थे बहुत अच्छा स्टेप है अभी इस चीज़ को लेके लेकिन इसके साथ साथ कुछ चीज़ें हैं जो हमारी जम्मू कश्मीर की फिल्म इंडस्ट्री को भी बूस्ट करेंगी वो ये है जैसे मैंने पहले भी कल किसी चैनल पर मैंने कहा था कि जब तक हमारा रिजनल फिल्म क्योंकि हम कुछ साल पहले एक डेढ़ साल पहले हमें फिल्म पॉलिसी मिली है अपनी सरकार की तरफ से हमने उसका भी वेलकम किया और फिल्म पॉलिसी के तहत हमें एक फिल्म इंडस्ट्री जम्मू कश्मीर में जो चले ग्रो करेगी उसके लिए भी एक हेल्पफुल है और उसके लिए ये है कि हमारी जो जम्मू कश्मीर में लोकल फिल्म्स बनेंगी 
फीचर फिल्म्स और जो रिजनल फिल्म बनेगी उसका एक प्रावधान रहना चाहिए थिएटर्स में एक शो कम से कम उसका होना चाहिए जैसे महाराष्ट्र में मराठी फिल्म्स का होता है उससे क्या होता है कि हमारे जो यूथ है हमारा जम्मू कश्मीर का उन वो प्रोफेशनल क्वालिफाइड होके आए हैं बाहर से फिल्म टेक्निक को लेके एक्ट कश्मीर में इतने लोग हम सब लोग हैं जो आ, फिल्म में काम कर रहे हैं लेकिन हम जब फिल्म में काम कर रहे हैं तो हम फिल्में देखें क्यों नहीं हाल में इसलिए ये बहुत अच्छा इनिशिएटिव है इसमें चीजों का ख्याल रखा जाए लोकल लोकल चीजों को का जो फ्लेवर है वो आया जाए पुरानी कश्मीरी फिल्में okay. वहां पे आए जो लोग पुरानी कश्मीर की कली फिल्म okay. इस तरह की फिल्मों की शुरू right. क्योंकि वहां का जो दर्शक है लोग हैं उसको लाना है right. यूथ को लाना है और यूथ तभी आएगा जब उसका लोकल फ्लेवर की बात यू फील नाउ द रियल टेस्ट बिगिन सिक्योरिंग दिस नॉर्मल सी विद रीओपनिंग ऑफ सिनेमाज and attracting other businesses and ensuring a safe environment is a daunting task how do you ensure that these cinema halls run because in the past also cinema i mean theaters have opened but they shut down in a matter of a year or two yes uh, maria uh, you are absolutely right in fact uh, i what i saw as young sp in 1990 there was a terrorist outfit by the name muslim jan was force and on the uh, directions of uh, uh, establishment across uh, they were used to, uh, to, to uh, actually they used the gun what majid hazri was talking of today that is the point when gun was used to demolish uh, the local industry the film industry the the the, the link of kashmir with the film industry and uh, to stop all the theaters all uh, wine shops all beauty parlors and that is the time when gun was used it is an attempt to uh, uh, to to rebuild now and uh, the uh, uh, i personally feel a step should be taken to ensure that uh, proper security is provided to these yes. uh, multiplexes there is no uh, grenade lobbing attempt from around yes. uh, people have lined up for tickets are there is no indiscriminate firing and there is a proper access control to the theaters so that no one can take yeah. an it inside and damage the people so the such attempts shall be made and i think administration should take sufficient okay. precautions okay then then arti uh, one criticism which is often there is that the normal c is almost manufactured that the government is rushing through these measures to give a false sense of normal c that is a criticism that's coming in maria let me uh, put you the uh, other aspect of this argument i would say that terrorism is manufactured islamic terrorism in kashmir is manufactured it's a conflict industry which was manufactured and it sustained because there was so much vested interest in keeping kashmir as a boiling for you know pot hmm. in uh, india that lot of people benefited from it lot of people made their careers lot of people made their empires in fact out of it so it is normalcy is natural for any society which you know has lived uh, with other communities for a very very long time normalcy is a nor- normalcy is a natural phenomena it's the chaos that is created which is artificial which is manufactured descent which you know the violence that they created they gave it a euphemism called dissent it wasn't dissent when you bring gun to the table it is a manufactured conflict so first of all the security has to be ensured intelligence has to be ensured hmm. and the government has to ensure that the conflict industry which was was manufactured and which perpetuated all these three decades they that needs to be dismantled the government has has done a lot but i think there is still a lot which needs to be done to dismantle that conflict industry a lot okay. of people so i ma- see Marjit are still been. powerful yes. there are a lot of people who still you know come on television channels and they use the same uh, nonsensical rhetoric okay majid has to respond to, to this create uh, trouble in the valley well maria saiba before responding to this question i want to highlight one issue that the oldest cinema hall in kashmir palladium belong to a sikh family 
and for the last 30 years their cinema hall was gutted and for the last 30 years they have been demanding the reconstruction of the cinema which the successive regimes didn't hmm. allow them so i hope modi ji intervenes and they get justice see coming to this point kashmir is safe for entertainment kashmir is safe for cinema but kashmir is not safe for kashmiri pandits kashmir is, is not safe for statehood kashmir is not safe for restoration of democratic rights to elections i mean what kind of hypocrisy is this on the part of government if this is about perception management okay but this is not the reality reality will be when kashmiri pandits will return we'll have elections we'll have statehood then only we will be enjoying this otherwise till then it will be a state of mourning and i won't be watching any movies in that cinema when the kashmiri continues to bleed why yes. does he want to keep telling lies to his people when are you going to tell the truth when are you going to stand up for your own people no, arti sahib have you returned have you returned to, have you return to kashmir has amit raina returned to kashmir very simple when ask kangan ko arti kya padhe likhe ko farsi kya tell me has the state to been restored have elections been held i mean i am giving you facts i don't want to argue as you are going to tell the facts my side when are you going to tell your when are you going to tell your community to acknowledge and to confess the wrongs that they were committed in 1990 when are you going to acknowledge that there was a genocide committed against kashmiri hindus when are you why going to tell the truth why have you failed to convince the supreme court you know, why have you failed to for honorable supreme court why has bjp right. government not done anything for you please right, be honest on the show bjp has not done anything for you people to be honest I am honest and I am saying BJP is not doing anything I, for the return of Kashmiri pandits or justice to Kashmiri pandits. I am not for entire Kashmir, but you constantly keep peddling the same narrative which destroyed Kashmir. I am which peddling is going the narrative that BJP is not doing the... anything for your return, neither for your justice. Okay, um, I uh, I'll give the final words to Amit Raina. Amit Raina, the point being made here by Majid Hadri is that normalcy or the real Naya Kashmir will be when. people like you return to kashmir see maria there are many steps uh, to uh, to normalcy one needs to understand that kashmir jammu kashmir is not a normal state it is a state which has been infested with terrorism for past 30 years and i think the first step the first and the foremost step is giving people the freedom of choice freedom of freedom of choice at the choice that has legally available to everyone in this country so i think that's a, for 30 years these mullahs and these uh, these hardliners have denied people the right to, uh, to exercise their choice and i think that's the first step government has taken uh, to bring back normalcy let them live the life the way rest of the people in this country live and i think it's a welcome step yes there are issues there are issues which need to be tackled there are issues on hard life on 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 uh, radicalization there are issues on justice to kashmiri pandits there are issues on unemployment yes but each each it doesn't mean that you have to give up one to do something else each and every step has to be taken and i think the freedom to exercise the, the choice is the foremost thing that has to be done and the government is doing done, doing that right now so opening up uh, liquor policy uh, opening up entertainment zones <laughs> opening up for tourism <laughs> opening up for tourism uh, is so majid hydri may 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 laugh at it because so he's the one who's rattled today you you are you are the one who's rattled today you are the you are yes i am making mockery of it because because you are rattled today your rat you shows how people like you who have who have who have made people prison of certain ideology are getting worried today that people are moving out of that prison so i understand your pain i understand your pain the freedom of choice includes the freedom to eat what they want to eat freedom to drink what they want to drink all right okay, thank so you so much for joining us amit raina arti tikku majid hadri sp vaid sanubar javed and mushtaq kak shifting focus to our second debate this is a hijab debate which is raging in the top court of the nation and also found a mention of what happened in iran
The Solicitor General of India, Tushar Mehta, representing the government of Karnataka, today cited the ongoing anti-hijab protests in Iran, stating that in Islamic theocracies, women are fighting against what they call is an oppressive practice. Remember, protests erupted after 22-year-old Masa Amini died after she was arrested by the country's morality police. Tushar Mehta pointed the finger at the Popular Front of India, claiming it engineered a movement to get people to wear a hijab, adding that the protests weren't a spontaneous act by some students. He also argued that wearing a hijab is not an essential religious practice in Islam, citing the Karnataka High Court ruling back in March, which ruled that it is not protected under Article 25. On the other hand, senior advocate Dushan Dave, representing the petitioners, argued that a hijab is connected to the dignity of a Muslim woman, just like a Hindu woman who covers her head. Dave argued that girls wearing hijabs in school do not violate anybody's peace and safety. The debate will continue in the court tomorrow because the hearing is on, but it rests on a few fundamental questions. Is the hijab a symbol of dignity? Is it a tool of oppression? Is wearing a hijab a choice? And most importantly, which is bigger, the rules of an institution or the individual right to express faith. Joining me on the show, Chetabdi Shivana is an advocate who appeared for the hijab practitioners. Advocate Nilofar Masood is uh, a social activist. We also have Zenith Shokat Ali, director of uh, Wisdom Foundation, Laura Hart, Director at the European-based uh, human rights NGO, Safeguards Defenders, joining me from Rome. We also have Mursal Nurzai. Uh, she is an activist, joining me from Munich. I'm going to come to you, Laura Hart, first. Uh, what's happening in Iran is almost a moment which is being seen as, as similar to Arab Spring which will change and change the entire direction in which women will be seen in Iran from here onwards. Uh, shouldn't there be more mobilization, particularly among other countries? Women in other countries should also stand in solidarity with the fight that has been undertaken by women of Iran. Well, we've seen this kind of, of movements uh, springing up in, in Iran quite regularly um, over, over the past years. Uh, this, is it, this is obviously an issue that has been going on for, for a very long time, um, since, since the, the late 70s. Um, and it's inspiring, I think, to a lot of women to, to see them standing up time and time again, um, regardless of the severe repression they they are facing and I think yes as women you are right we should be standing up uh, with them standing for their rights um, for religious freedom for expression of religious freedom um, as they see fit unfortunately we do not see that um, happening too too often obviously and, and this is an issue that happens with a lot of dictatorships around the world you know the willingness of, of good people of people willing to stand up for human rights um, to stand up when this also happens under the worst regimes, su such as in Iran. Um, I do think, and I just want to add a quick note, um, so we need to stand with the women of Iran. We need to make sure their voices are heard. We've seen the efforts, as we see every single time that protests yeah, because, erupt in because, Iran. Because, Laura, it takes um, the a lot of courage to, to, block to, stand up, to stand up and, and put up a fight of this nature in an Islamic Republic. That's what hap mm -hmm. is happening in Iran. And I think women there need support from all of us in different countries and particularly who are seen as progressive voices in the Muslim world. Uh, Dr. Zina Shokat Ali, let me look at the Supreme Court and what is being seen as turning point in the arguments playing out in the apex court. Hijab being linked to dignity and dignity of women in 21st century. Isn't that really ironical? How is it really dignity? I think it is, uh, you know, it, it, it is the last lap of the argument. And uh, I was, I'm quite surprised that it was brought up in this particular fashion. Yes, a women's dress is dignified. Every kind of dress a woman chooses to wear 
is dignified as, as is the hijab uh, and you know to make a particular reference only to one kind of dress because after all when we define dignity what do you call it it's a personal quality yes. of of you know of working of being worthy of honor it is a, it is a mark of self respect a quality which 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 in which there is poise there is decorum and there is a, you know there is a there is a grandeur there is an authority there is a rank there is a self respect and there is a high repute and uh, it is a manner of speech it, it is a dignity with which you uh, conduct yourself it is an etiquette now how are all these can be fitted into mr dushyant uh, mr dave's uh, your know, description of only one form of a dress that a lady wears is uh, you know is uh, yes and, is, and uh, yes and, uh, and more so shatabdi shatabdi we are looking at a time when women are fighting against a islamic regime in iran saying that hijab is not a symbol of choice for them a 7 year old is forced to wear a hijab and then only she can study then only she can step out of her home that's regressive practice which is almost imposed on her why is it being given that kind of twist of choice here in india in the arguments that are being made in the court the fact is that these are teenager teenagers and now the solicitor general has said that there are evident pfi links the campus front of india is also active that these girls did not wear hijab before 2022 all of a sudden they start wearing hijab so that there, there is a larger background to this entire story shatabdish now my 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 answer is simple yes now if you believe or women across the globe believe that it's a regressive uh, approach or you know it's patriarchal in nature to impose a hijab on muslim women please feel free to do so and uh, you know question your authority question these rights before the competent authority and we will definitely support you hmm. now the girls who came to us to uh, seeking for legal representation they clearly stated and admitted that it is our choice to wear this hijab and we are made to uh, we are being forced to choose between our right you know our uh, between their identity and their dignity and their right to education now the college said the college said that you know we will not permit you to wear a hijab inside class and if you do so we won't allow you that is in clear violation of article 19 and that is our primary argument and just to uh, counter your other question about the pfi let me make it very clear that we have produced government government the very same puc college had issued government college id cards where these same girls were were found to be wearing the hijab now and in kundapur they have been wearing the hijab since so time immemorial what is being highlighted now, the state by, of by the government is not here new is to hijab. Let the me, Karnataka let me, let government should have this let me just finish that this is not finish. a spontaneous act of few individual children that we want to wear a hijab that there was a larger uh, conspiracy and the children were acting as advised so they were acting at somebody's behest Correct. I will, and I here will pfi is playing a role i will answer that question hmm. the senior advocate devdat kamath is arguing for a case of the kundapur muslim girls muslim girl students they were wearing a hijab from from time immemorial in that government puc college okay and it's very uh, uh, you know inaccurate to say that this is there's a political conspiracy behind this hmm. because many organizations have come in forward to support this cause let me make it very clear that when the pfi uh, organization made ghastly remarks against the high court judges i was the one on your channel to dismiss and reject those uh, ghastly remarks on this very same channel and okay. secondly nobody let i was representing most of the petitioners most of the petitioner girls and nobody okay. from let, the pfi let me, let or the cfi have tried here. to contact me it is an attempt attempt yes. to no, but, you know it's a political I, conspiracy I'm, I'm to derail this, the court i am seeing a uh, seeing something problematic in in a society such as afghanistan women were seen to be interacting with men studying in kabul university and other universities after the taliban regime women and men are separated they are also 
you know, been told to stay at home, no education for girls, that's the new Taliban. The Taliban regime has done that to women. We are also seeing very regressive practice which has led to almost a rebellion which is happen happening, a movement which is playing out in Iran. And here, why should hijab then be linked to education at all? Because the purpose of uniform here is uniformity, that all girls irrespective of religion, caste, creed should be seen as entering a school's uh, you know, building and they are all part of the same education system. So Nilofar, why are we even going in that direction? When girls never wore a hijab or a burqa, they are moving in that direction and the entire society and the so-called choice brigade are encouraging that argument. See, uh, I'll not talk about Afghanistan because they have set rules there and it is Islamic regime which is going over there. Yeah. We are a secular country. In the ragging debate or the right of hijab uh, in India, what uh, we are actually missing is the idea of tolerance. For the multi, uh, for the multi-ethnic uh, po uh, poetry such as like India, tolerance is the foundational stone of the uh, uh, fundamentalist canon. The negation of the which uh, the negation of which in fact renders the basic idea of democracy as viscous and meaningless. So before we are trying any experiment, it is very important that for tolerant society and polity, it is both prudent and desirable that before prescribing a practice it is important to undertake cost benefit analysis if that would have been done in this particular case then these things would not have happened okay see we, we have, have uh, Mursal our set and own laura and i'm going to go back to them i'm going to come to you see, in just a bit set, yes nilo for quickly 30 seconds we have, we have set fundamental rights which have been provided by our own constitution there is no such law and order uh, situation which has arisen because some females have chosen to cover their head so if they intend to have the right to education, if they intend and choose to cover their house, no, but how the it problem is going here is the that the girls are system. girls are making the argument that uh, that education they they are ready to give up their education, but they believe in wearing hijab. So that's where the problem is, and and in a country such as Iran, Allah. girls do not have that choice. So is this more of no no problem here is that we are not seeing the bigger picture. We are seeing it from the prism which is taking the country in a direction that the, you would not really want to see five years, ten years down the line. Uh, Mursal, you are seeing the argument in India and that juxtaposition becomes important. Women in Iran giving up their hijab, burning their hijab, fighting it out and here there are a group of petitioners, young girls, school students fighting for hijab. Mursal. Um. Thank you for having me. I think um, in what happened in Iran was um, once again shocking, but not unfamiliar. We are all familiar with such scenarios uh, taking place in Iran. Um, similar case happened a couple of years ago in Afghanistan. I think the name of the girl was Farhanda. Um, now, Iran is a population, um, uh, the female population of Iran is around uh, 42.12 million, uh, which is around the half of the population of the country. Yes. Um, and why I'm saying this is because, um, and you cannot force the 42.12 million people population of your country to do certain things. Now, forcing anything in any religion is not allowed, whether something is in religion or not in the religion. The point is, you cannot force people to do certain things. It, it might be in religion, but how do you want to force in today's digitalized world, where we are talking about uh, modern societies and sustainable societies, to force people to do certain or act certain ways or or dress certain ways? Now, coming. Um, to Afghanistan, um, it's very unfortunate that Afghanistan is going through a phase where burqa, hijab, no hijab, no burqa, that's not the case. The case is the women are not given any rights to do anything, yeah. whether it's wearing certain clothes or going out to get education, get treatments or going um, out to earn money, right? 
Now, um, what is happening in, in, in India, I might not be the right person to, um, to comment on that. However, one point is, makes sense to me that in a university environment or in a school environment, um, uniform is meant to bring uniformity and discipline. Yes. Now, how that has to be followed, that depends on the authorities of the universities and the schools, mm. that they have to make sure that people are respected um, because everyone is coming from the uh, from different uh, background and different religions, that they should all be treated the same way. Um, however, if someone decides out of those authorities where the uniforms are not mandatory, and this is only my personal opinion, um, that they shall and can um uh, dress up the way they want yes. and i Laura? think um, i myself i'm muslim and i am it's not about being pro or against hijab it's yes. just understanding um how to respect certain things yes absolutely i think uh, it's a choice uh, seen by many and but the only argument that i'm trying to make is that when they're young girls below 18 below 16 is it a choice for them or have they been told to wear it only by their parents? And that's the larger concern here because that's what is being argued in, in, in the larger, you know, uh, the larger realm here. Laura, Laura Hart, uh, the point that I was making uh, with you and we started talking about it. Uh, yes, we should stand in solidarity. The women of Iran do not see this as a choice. For them, it's regressive. It's... Uh, for most of them, it's it's oppressive, and uh, it's almost like a turning point where women are saying enough is enough. Uh, but in this enough is enough moment, it must have taken them, you know, it has actually taken them forty years to reach that point. Uh, shouldn't we be seeing more progressive voices? The reason why I'm saying is that MBS, for example, Mohammed bin Salman of of uh, Saudi Arabia was seen as this very progressive voice. Why isn't he speaking in favor of these women? Um, well, on Mohammed bin Salman, there's many other things to be said. I'm not going to go into that, uh, but I would not define him as a progressive. Um, I think something that came out of this conversation throughout the different speakers is one, we need to be very careful in not conflating what is happening in Iran or in Afghanistan, where yes, women are being oppressed, but not only women, uh, entire peoples are being oppressed by the authorities into behaving in a certain way, into what they are free to say, to do, and so on. Now, that is very different, I hope, from what the situation in India is. So I think when we talk about the women in Iran, the women in Afghanistan, uh, the women being oppressed in, in other countries, um, it's a different kind of debate. It's the negation of all yeah. uh, personal freedoms, including the freedom to, to choose one's religion. It's my feeling that the debate in India uh, is on the other side of the spectrum, and, and we want to ensure that people do have that freedom to choose their religion, their freedom to express their religion. Uh, when it comes to children, this is always a difficult debate. Um, it's not only a debate when, when we talk about Islam, it's, you know, all parents um, give their religion, teach their religion to their children at a very young age. So that is a broader debate that maybe uh, we want to have. I would definitely not want to politicize or to translate into an internal Fine Indian enough. debate what is happening all in right. Iran, while uh, I obviously hope and think we should all stand with the women uh, of Iran. But it's very important to keep those things separated uh, and not to have a debate styled on, on, on how those things happen in, in dictatorships yeah, because, so, you know, India yeah. is not a dictatorship. And I just want to, to recall the, the same debate that's being had here on, on schools, on universities, the dress code is a debate that's been going on in many European countries for a very long time. Various European countries have responded in different ways. Um, the Supreme Courts of different countries have reacted in different ways to the kind of uniforms that have been imposed. Some have upheld it, others have not. So this is an ongoing debate that is going on uh, in the wider world democratic world. world. But right. I think in terms Laura, in which we need to have that debate, really respectful really of the personal time. choices, Thank you so of much. personal freedom, More so, of, of uh, Noor, religious freedom. Noor Zai, Dr. What? Zina Shokat Ali, Advocate Nilofar and Shatabdi Shivanna. Uh, on that note, we are slipping into a short break. After that, our top international story. The tide seems to be turning in war zone Ukraine, where Ukrainian forces 
have recaptured the town of Izium in the Kharkiv region. However, the town has been left in ruins and locals are struggling for essential supplies. A CNN special report after a very short break. Stay with us.